what we'll talk about today is particle kinetics, uh, and it's the introductory material that follows from chapter 13 in Hibbler. Main goals today are really just to talk about Newton's three laws, free body diagrams, and finally systems of particles. The first one we have is Newton's three, our first law, particle at rest or moving in a straight line will remain that way if the resultant force acting on it is zero. So typically you might think about this as a block, two people are pushing on it, and they both have the same force, force F, in equal opposite uh, directions. And as a result, the block doesn't move. However, the block can have a constant velocity, in which case that's the same thing, and the block is still undergoing a zero net force and zero net acceleration. And this is what you covered in Civ 100. You had a lot of problems where you looked at things that were in static equilibrium. If the resultant force is not zero, that's Newton's second law, and the particle experiences an acceleration in the same direction and proportional to the resultant force. Now, in this course, we don't bother with the alpha anymore. We just call it m, a mass. And it's usually the mass of the object of interest. So here's the mass of the block. And sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. In fact, this is the primary equation, the only equation we really need to solve every problem in this book and in this course. And this is the basis, it's the foundation of MIE 100. The third law is mutual force of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. So if I have a person who is pushing on a box with a force F, the box is pushing back a force F on the person. And typically this is sort of described by a system like this, and so we, we can use Newton's second law in these problems. This is also an important part of MIE 100. We'll talk about it, particularly when we look at systems of particles. One thing to note and just keep in mind as you go through the course, this is probably late January when you've covered the initial material in kinetics. Particles are all we talk about, and they, are, they have mass but no size. For the second half of the course, we're going to have objects that have both some sort of size and mass. So we go from mass here to rigid bodies that both have size and mass. The most crucial skill to develop as you start the course is really how to do free body diagrams. We need to break up a problem into its component parts. And the basic rules are all the same throughout the course. Draw the problem out, choose your coordinates, define those axes so you know what is positive and negative, and put all the forces in the diagram. So here we have a case, a person is pushing with force, F, and there is a resultant acceleration of the block mass times acceleration. So force F is really a component force of X, so I can use that, and we'll get this first equation right here. I'll also have weight and normal force. Normal force is uh, the external force holding up the block, so the floor pushing on the block. Weight is always there. Now, N is acting upwards, so it's positive and W is negative. So I've written this directly as a negative sign here. Uh, typically I'd write N plus W and say that W or MG is minus MG. You can look at more complex cases. So for example, the person here is now pushing at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. And the block is again moving. So the block has a force F, it's got to have components Fx, Fy, as seen here. And you have the weight force again and the normal force. Again, I've defined here this Yx. And you may get tired of writing it down, but it's really helpful later on when you start to look at more complex geometries that you keep doing this. 
And in that case, I have force x, which is equal now to mass times acceleration x, and force y, which is f sine theta. All the other terms are the same. And you'll note that because this is downward and y is positive upward, it's also a negative value. The other thing I'll add often is force of friction, and that's new and We'll spend more time on this as you move through the course, but force of friction for now is just going to be some sort of mu uh, static coefficient of static or kinetic friction dependent on the case. Here the box is moving and therefore it'll be a static coefficient or a coefficient of static friction. And that will equal FF equals mu KN. So I have these two forces. And now I have a negative x because I have force of f in this. I have force x, which is positive still, and it's still f cos theta. The other one is normal force, which is acting upward, minus the weight force, minus f sine theta. The last case I'm looking at is a more general case without a person pushing. And here the weight is causing the motion of the block. So again, I have a force of friction. I have weight here, and the object is in motion. Now I've defined this so that x is in the direction of motion or expected motion, and y is perpendicular to the path. I haven't said this before, but I know that all of my y's are equal to zero because the block doesn't move up or down. So in terms of this diagram, this is the resultant free body diagram. I have a weight component that is acting downward, which is in the negative y direction, and a weight component in the direction of four, or motion, which is a positive direction. And I've rotated this block for my free body diagram. In terms of my x components, I have weight, force of friction, and I end up with the acceleration. In my y direction, I have normal force, which is acting upward, and finally, the weight force, which is acting downward. The last thing I want to cover in this is systems of particles. So here, for example, I have three particles, A, B, and C. Now, each of these particles will have a corresponding force on it, a partner or neighbor, and it will have an equal and opposite corresponding so force of AC is going to be equal, opposite, and collinear with respect to FCA. Same with FAB and FBA and FBC and FCB. So if I define this system so I have this red dashed line, I can say that all of the forces inside that dashed line, my control area, is going to are going to be internal. These forces, capital F1, 2, and 3, are external forces, and they have the yellow arrows pushing on the system boundary. So internal forces all go away, so they just disappear. But my external forces cause the motion. So I have F1, F2, F3, those three external forces, and then I have the system acceleration, which is MA, MB, MC, times the acceleration of G. G is going to go off in some direction, although each of the particles may go in separate directions, but the system will respond to the total forces applied. So where is that center of mass? The center of mass is going to be defined, first of all, by the X location and masses of the particle. So if you have, say, for example, MA, which is super massive relative to MB and MC, so it's 10 kilograms versus one gram, one gram, then it will sort of bias towards A. However, if they're equally uh, massed, then it'll be the geometric center. And here I'm going to assume it's close to the geometric center. Same thing with Y. Here you have a center of mass of all the particles. It's a useful tool. It's really important, especially as you start to get more and more particles. We don't do a lot of problems like this in the course. We tend to have more single particles or rigid bodies where you deal with some of these ideas.
more uh, more reasonably. Uh, a rigid body consisting of something like this, a rod, and your G is there, is more interesting than the arbitrarily positioning uh, particles. So in terms of what we covered today, we have Newton's three laws. Defining roughly rigid bodies and particles and uh, uh, explaining that, in fact, the, the goal here is eventually to go to rigid bodies, and you'll start to see that after reading week. Common free body diagrams and systems of particles. So uh, really the, the thing I want you mostly to pull out is this. Uh, you really have to spend a lot of time on the free body diagrams. They're crucial for the core. Thank you.